Co-main event, Dan Ige coming in at plus 165 against Bryce Mitchell, sitting at minus 200, over under two and a half rounds, minus 215 for the over, plus 175 for the under. Dan Ige coming in here two and three in his last five. Uh, he's got back-to-back wins, one uh, or three straight wins, wins actually. No, two straight wins, my bad. Uh, Nate Landwehr win in uh, UFC 289 in Canada, decision win, nearly had him knocked out in the second and then a second round knockout against Damon Jackson. Before that, losses to Evloy of Emmett and the Korean Zombies. So he's back on track after a tough little streak for him. Bryce Mitchell coming off his first professional loss against Ilya Taporia. We were expecting him to fight earlier um, this year, and it didn't come to fruition. He was supposed to fight Jonathan Pierce. Then he was supposed to fight Mozar Evloev, and then had to pull out of that. So he's finally getting his shot here. Hopefully he can make it to the fight. Should be a fun one here. It's, it's a good test uh, for both guys because Bryce has is, is got to show his abilities on the feet, and Dan Ige got to pr- prove once again like he can handle a wrestler. Um, so I'm interested to see how this one plans out. What are you thinking? Yeah, the one thing that scares me for Dan Ige, uh, like obviously if this thing stays on the feet, Ige is going to have the advantage. But you look at the Mavzar Evluev fight, and he got taken down nine times and just dominated and, you know, lost that fight. And I could see a world where it looks similar to that fight against Bryce Mitchell because when Mitchell's on, his grappling's phenomenal. Like, the guy, is, he's relentless as well. He's strong. He gets guys down. And when he gets you down, like, he is really, really good with the, with the ground game and the jiu-jitsu. I mean, he's got one of the only twisters in UFC history alongside, uh, alongside now Damon Blackshear and the Korean Zombie. Um, but on the feet, I think we saw it against Topuria that he can struggle with some higher level strikers. Now, the one thing you have to think of really is, you know, Dan Ige is not Ilya Topuria by any means at all. But Dan Ige does possess power and he can find the chin and he is really slick with his combinations and he will work the body well um, as well. But again, if Bryce Mitchell comes in here healthy, you know, a lot of rumors of him injured in his last fight against Topuria. Um, rumored of like a slip disc in his back or something like that over the winter. So if he's healed from that and he comes in 100% and he sticks to the game plan of trying to get Dan Ige get down, I think he could find success. Ige's takedown defense, only 56%. Um, Bryce Mitchell's you know 44% accuracy, averages 3.26 per fight. So uh, I, I do think it could hit the mat early at some point. We'll see what Bryce can do with it. But if Bryce, for some reason, can't get the takedowns and he gets a little bit tired here, I think Ige could could tune him up and find the chin. For the pick, I'm going to go with Bryce Mitchell. I think he's going to come in healthy and more motivated here. Uh, I'm taking a little bit of a risk. I know he's the favorite, and I think betting-wise, um, there could be value on Dan Ige. But for the pick, I think I think we're going to see a, a decent version of Bryce Mitchell. Might be a little buy-low spot on him. Yeah, that's what I was thinking um, coming into this one because – a loss to Toporia isn't really the worst thing. I mean, it, I know it was uh, a fight where you're kind of expecting a closer fight, and, and he kind of got his spot whooped. Um, but, I mean, before that, I mean, he's taken down Edson Barbosa four times, like completely handling Edson Barbosa, handling Andre Feely. Like, those are some two pretty tough guys. And then the fight against Toporia, I think, just wiped everything clean between – uh, what people see of him. As for Dan Ige, on to two fight win streak. The opponents are solid. Damon Jackson, solid. Just can, can't really take a punch that well. Nate Lamware, solid, but he's got to be able to like break you. He, he's got to be able to outwork you. Dan Ige has never been finished. He's, he's going to be there for all three rounds. Like That's just not really a good matchup for Nate Lamware. And uh, Ige was able to take advantage of it. His career statistics, 56% takedown defense. Uh, like you said, taken down a bunch of times by Evloev, uh, even the Korean Zombie. It's going to be a tale of like how his takedown defense looks, really. I do think Bryce Mitchell will look better on the feet than he did against Taporia. Not that it was it was like terrible. What it really got him in trouble in that fight was like he got a takedown on Taporia. The only guy uh, that's able to that has been able to take down Taporia is Bryce Mitchell. But then Taporia has such a good ground game. He was like, I can't deal with this guy on the ground. Like, I can't just manhandle him like I've been doing to these other guys. I think that was a big wake-up call for him. Um, 
and I don't think Danny is going to possess that in this one. I do lean Bryce Mitchell, but I don't know if I could get behind minus 200 because right. Dan Ige is tough. Like, like I said, he's never been finished. Um, he could lose a decision here by just being on his back, but that's kind of been his problem in a lot of these fights. So I do think he's probably worked on that a ton, trains at a good camp or a good gym in the extreme couture, got a good coach, Eric Nixick. So I'd expect him to come in here with a, a good game plan and probably make it a close fight. So I, to me, I think it's probably dog or pass. I don't think I want to want to lay minus 200 on Bryce Mitchell. Just uh, I want to see him, how he bounce, bounces back from this one. Um, for the pick, I'll take him for the pick, but I, I'm just not laying the chalk on him like that. 